You know, I really like mountain bike riding and trail riding and such, but let's be honest, man. There's some of the gear that makes you look like a true badass when you're out there and doing your thing. And then there's some gear that will make you look like a dork. Let's do it. Now this helmet is actually one of the better looking helmets that I've ever ever had before. And I really like it and it's super functional. And that's the thing, just because it makes you look like a dork, that doesn't mean it can't be functional. Usually the stuff that makes you look like a dork is highly functional, such as this helmet, okay? But this video ain't about the helmet. I really do like it, it's super comfortable by the way. Link is in the description. But let me put this helmet down because the next thing I wanna talk about is the fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a fanny pack, all right? It has a use, I promise you. So when I'm out on my trails, right, I have done a video on this Camelback right here. Uh, Camelback Mule, that's what it is. I've used this bag on vacation as a traditional backpack. I just stuff stuff in it for the beach and stuff like that, you know, taking the bladder out. But a lot of times I've had to use it for my trail riding because it, you know, has the bladder inside and it has the, the locking system with the magnet and has tons of pockets, a helmet pouch. It is an awesome backpack that has a bladder. That's why it's a Camelback. But sometimes this is way too much when you're going on your trail ride. So you don't want to take all that water, but then this is not enough because you can run through this and maybe, a, I don't know, a 20 or 30 minute ride depending on how hot it is outside. So what comes next? A fanny pack. So right here, we're gonna talk about two of them that I picked out on the internet. One of them I like, and it is definitely going to be my daily driver as far as, you know, when I need it. I'm not gonna be caught dead on the streets wearing these things, <laughs> you know, just out and about doing my thing. But when I'm on the trail, one of these is actually going to be on my body and you'll figure out which one it is as we go through the video. This right here, this is the, this one is all new from Tuli. Tuli is literally my favorite backpack company. So when I saw that they had a, a nice functional uh, fanny pack with a water bl bladder in it, or a hip pack as some would call it, I was all for it. And then of course, we got what really looks like to be the baby brother of the mule, which is the Repack RL4 from Camelback. But this is the Rail 4 from Thule. They actually have, uh, this is actually the largest ones. They have two more that are a little bit smaller than this one. I wanted the larger one because of this flap right here. And I'm just, I'm just gonna compare the two a little bit for you just so you can see. And then the one that I'm actually using, I'll take it out and show you how it works in the real world. So right here, we have the Camelback. Let's go through the pockets first and we'll compare the both of them. So on the front, this is the main attraction for me. It was the, it was the, uh, the front flap, super easy access to a massive pocket, man. That, that's a big old pocket. You can put uh, uh, probably a seven inch tablet in there if you got one, like an iPad mini or something like that. It is huge, but it's not very uh, wide. So don't be stuffing it too much. But then the other thing that really caught my attention was this side pocket right here. It's on the side of it. So as you're wearing it on your hip, you can just slide your hand in there and get your phone out. And it actually is made for a phone because they have a kind of a mock phone right here. This is like an iPhone 10s Max or something like that that they've slid in there. Just to show you, it will accommodate a phone with the case on it. If you have one of those rubbery uh, neoprene type of cases, it won't slide as easy because it's catching on this microfiber in here, right here. So it, it won't, it'll have some resistance going in and out but it is a secure spot for your phone i mean we just slid that thing in there so that's that was actually one of the deciding factors for me is it gonna fit my phone so i looked at it and i was like cool but then we get over here to the main pouch the big one that holds the water bladder so right here we open up this water bladder pouch and you can look inside and it's got some organization here you got a lanyard for your key with a little hook ring right there and then you got a uh, nice size pouch, which you could actually stand something up if you want to. That's You could put tools in there if you want to. I would not advise that. I really don't like my tools being that close to my, my water bladder. It's like, you know, you got this right here and then you got this divider, but oh man, I don't know about putting tools in here for myself. Maybe some snacks. You gotta have your snacks, man. Your, you know, your cliff bars and stuff. And then you got another one that's 
pretty much identical. I think this one's slightly wider, but right here you got these stretchy bands. You have one, two, three, four, five of them where you can kind of just put things such as tools or bars or whatever you want to put in there, like a pump or something. But here is one of my other favorite parts of this bag, which is the bladder system. It actually has kind of like a, uh, what is this? This is, it's like a hook system that lets the bladder or a suspension system that suspends the bladder from the top of the bag. And I'm not gonna take it out because they're so difficult to get in and I want this video to go kind of smooth. But if I pull it out a little bit, I'll show you the entire bladder. Back up, man, back up. There you go. So you can see the entire bladder right here. And it just kind of flaps out like that. And I mean, it feels like a sturdy bladder. To be honest with you, I've never used a Thule bladder. So I don't, I do not know how durable they are, whether they leak or not, or anything of such. This looks like it may come out. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not gonna try to take it out, but you probably could take this out and clean it really good if you needed to. But I really do like how the dedicated pouch, I mean, this is a truly dedicated pouch that was made for the shape and size of this bag. And it is a 1.5 liter, which is 50 flow ounces. Uh, you stick that in there and then you can put it in its own dedicated pouch, which you can see right there. Love that organization of the inside of the main compartment of this bag. And then you can route it out through the side right here, which is great. Does it have it on the other side? Let's check. Okay, it doesn't, you can only route it through the right side of the pouch or the bag. Sorry about all the scraping, it's the buckles. But when you get to the side of this, let's go to this side. You see these pockets right here? Now these pockets are useful, but they seem small enough to not get in the way, but not big enough to really have any serious use. I'm not sure what in reality you're going to put in here and really feel safe about it being in there because it's not secured at the top. I mean, it could just kind of wrap around it and stretch a little bit. I mean, if you look at that, it's not really that big of a pouch. So I'm not sure what you're going to put in there. Possibly some tools, you know, maybe an Allen key set or something like that. Who knows? Or maybe, you know, some quick handy snacks. But, you know, you still run the risk of them coming out because this flap is just open like that. But moving around, you got the uh, the belt system. So right here, you can see how the belt just kind of goes through these this little tie right here. And then you have... Um, a strap that the belt will go under, and then you have a Velcro strap. As secure as this is, this was my major turnoff about the actual bag. So first you have this Velcro, okay? You'll Velcro it around your body, okay? Nice and snug, and it does stretch. It's got some stretchy goings that way. If you've had too many tacos and beers, you can still fit your belly in there. And then it also has a lot of ventilation on the side right here as well. But to get it really secure, you have to snap this buckle okay once you snap that buckle you then tighten up the uh the straps right here and this is surprising for Tui because Tui, like i said is one of my favorite actually the favorite bag company of mine but they did not allow you or they didn't provide any straps or anything to keep this from flapping all over the place i am straight up ocd and now you got these little loose flaps hanging all around the place in the front of your body. I do not like that. So once you get everything tight, you're going to have this flapping all over the place and it's just a cumbersome kind of looking thing. And then when you want to take it off, you undo this and then you have to undo the Velcro. I just, that really turned me off. That might be a selling point for a lot of people, but for me, kind of turned me off. Now here we got our drinking hose. This is another clutch thing uh, from Thule. So right here we have this just magnetic strip. So that way you don't really have to line anything up as this thing is on your body. You see that blue line right there? That's just, you just kind of get it in the vicinity and it just locks in place and it is tight, man. It's, it's a good magnetic pull and it just locks in place. That is nice, man. That's probably one of the best I've seen on the market. And it makes sense because it comes from Thule. This is super awesome. I wish they would all come like this. As a matter of fact, I wish the Camelback had this. <laughs> but yeah, you got your drinking spout right there. And yes, it is long enough for you to bring it up to your, to your mouth from your waistline. So don't worry about that. But the cool thing about this is, like I said, you just kind of drop it in the place where it's supposed to go and it will lock in place and it's not gonna come apart. Then you got your top grab handle right here, which is always nice to have when you're not wearing this thing. You can just pick it up and cart it around uh, and throw it in your trunk and stuff. But you do have a couple of other little, you know, latch points and stuff like that to be utilized. But for me, the big turnoff point was the buckling system and the, the loose straps everywhere. Even though I really like the massive pocket, 
and the foam pouch. I, I just could not commit myself to this bag. Also, the fact that most of the organization is right next door to the pouch, to the water reservoir. I just couldn't do that because I've had a bladder leak onto my phone before. This is back before phones were really water resistant and waterproof and it ruined my phone so I know it can actually happen and you just don't want your stuff to get wet. So let's put this chili to the side and we'll explore the Camelback RL4. I think it's RL4, yeah, LR4, that's what it is. <laughs> All right, so here we are, man. We got the front pouch here, which is a little bit different than what they've done with Thule. So right here, this was, this actually concerned me at first until I got it in hand. This right here did not seem very secure to me, being that you can just, you know, open this up. It's nice to be able to have all of this, you know, real estate to just open this up and, and put all your stuff in. But I worried about this bottom, this bottom uh, zipper right here. Turns out it is super secure. And when you want to go ahead and lock it in place, you just zip it all the way up. I prefer to tuck that zipper in right there, that zipper pull, tuck it in and then take this Velcro and Velcro it. Then you're left with a real pouch where you can actually put some stuff and not worry about it falling out. So I do not worry about this coming apart unless you really apply some serious force on this thing. It has two points where it's gotta come open and then you gotta dig this out of here and then unzip it and then it's open. So I don't worry about this anymore. It just concerned me online, but I'm glad I got it in my hands and got to uh, check it out. Oh, by the way, this happens on Thule too. You have a reflective uh, deal right here where you can hook on a light or something in case you're night riding it. It's on the Thule bag as well. But let's open up this main pouch or the secondary main pouch. On this outside pocket, it is zippered and meshed. So you could put some keys in here if you want to. This is the key to my bike rack. So I just keep that in there this way. Uh, that way I don't forget it. And it is ventilated. So you don't have to worry about stuff getting smothered and stuff and just being nasty in there. And it's a nice size pouch, man. You could actually fit a phone in there if you wanted to. My phone is a little big. This is a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which was a huge uh, thing with me because I needed to make sure this big ass phone would fit in the Camelback or the Thule. It fits in the Thule, but in the Camelback, I don't think it was really made for big phones, but I did figure out that without a case, actually with a case, it actually fits in here. I just don't use cases. When you put a case on here, it will drag and it will be less resistant when, or more resistant when you put it in and out of this part, but also it will fit lengthwise. So when you zipper this up, like I said, you can feel secure with that in there. So you can put your phone right there for quick access if you want to. It's just kind of disappointing that this particular bag does not have a dedicated phone spot, being that everybody's running around here with a phone and they want quick access to it. So uh, just be noted that, uh, make note of that, pun intended, that uh, you can put a Galaxy Note 20, which is probably one of the largest phones on the market inside of this pocket and lengthwise. Now over here in this little pocket, it actually looks a lot smaller or it looks a lot bigger than it actually is. Let me zoom you in here. So right here, you see how long this pocket is or how wide it is? This pocket is actually the same because it kind of comes over past this little, uh, uh, past this seam right here. So my finger, actually that's an inch. So yeah, you got another inch out uh, in addition to what you see here. Therefore, you can put some snacks in there, man. You gotta have your snacks. These are the blocked energy tubes from Cliff, but you can put tools in there, a little tool pouch or something like that. And you got two big pockets right there, so that's nice. So that's the front pocket for all your stuff that you're gonna be carrying with you. Make sure you secure this nice and snug, that way your stuff doesn't fall out. But let's go into the large main compartment. This is where your, um, bandana that's where you got to keep your bandana but also that's where your main reservoir is going to be now there is no organization um, camelback isn't suggesting you put a whole bunch of stuff in here obviously it's just big stuff so you don't want to put electronics or i wouldn't i would not put any tools in here it's just one big pouch but on the back side of that you can see the divider where you put your your water reservoir now camelback you know they've been doing this for a while so their, their model has this detachable, you know, quick detach hose right here that you can run through on either side. So if you haven't figured it out yet, this is the one I actually use. And once you fill this thing up, it does take up room in the pouch, but your stuff still will fit securely. What I do not like about this is once again, it's an OCD kind of thing. This right here, this little handle or whatever it is, it's made to stick inside of Camelback's design bags. It seems like they just took, you know, one of their leftover, you know, reservoirs and said, hey, you know, let's put, just put this in the bag. It fits the shape, 
but where the cap is and where this uh, handle is, it should be upright and, or upright and it should be hooking onto the actual bag. A lot like the Tule does, there's no suspension here for it. So it just kind of sits in the bag and it'll get all bunched up and stuff like that when it's not full and it just doesn't sit perfectly. And that's just me being OCD. Uh, if you're anything like me, you're gonna have an issue with that too. But it was not enough for me to pass up this bag. You know what, let me leave this out of here because you know, it just takes a little bit too much time to get it back in place. So there's your reservoir right there. And like I said, you can uh, route it through either side of the bag. You got the right side, which you just kind of put through that hole and then you run it through the side pouches around your waistline, or you can do the exact same thing. It is constructed the same way on the opposite side and you just kind of run it through just like that. On both sides of the bag, you're gonna see these loops, these uh, nylon loops that have been made. One of them will be taken up by the uh, magnetic hooking system or locking system for your for your uh, water spout there. Uh, you can move it if you want to. These things are hard to uh, move, but if you do decide to move it, it can be moved. But on the left side of the pouch, you do have a zippered pocket, which is right here, and it kind of expands a little bit. And that is where I chose to keep my tools and a set of uh, rubber gloves, just in case I need to work on something. I keep my tools in a plastic baggie there, but you got a nice open pouch here, man, and it is secured. Now, I did see one particular video on YouTube where a guy had his iPhone in here. If you got a smaller phone, Phone, yes, it will fit. But as you can see, if you've got one of the bigger phones or if your phone's got a case on it, you are not putting your phone in there and it's not gonna be accessible. That's just not gonna work out for you. So beware, you are not gonna be putting your phone in there unless you have a smaller phone. And it, that way it'll, it will work for you in that case. Now on the opposite side, they chose to go a different route and they put kind of a, a real pouch without a zipper, but it is still secure because it has a lid. If you, if you open this up, you can see where, that's where I have my keys and my wallet just for kind of quick access in case, you know, I stopped at a store or something. I don't know in case they got like a little a little uh, wizard market in the middle of the forest where I'm riding. <laughs> I need to purchase some some magic healing potion or something. <laughs> So they got this pouch right here. It's the exact same size. It's just secured differently. It's a lot easier access because it's a, a just a kind of a, a stretching lid on top. But you do have those uh, those nylon loops again where you can move that that clip in case you reroute uh, your water spout here. Now the suspension system on your body, it is uh, I'm not going to say it's better or worse. It's just different. So what they have here. You see this right here? You see how it's kind of just moving through? That nylon belt is going through the backside of that pouch and that is going to pull the pouch closer to your body, which makes it feel more secure on your body or on your back. So this pulls through and that's and you tighten it there. And this is where Thule fell short, man. I'm really disappointed because they have these little Velcro loops right here, which you can tidy up all your leftover um, strap when you when you've got it adjusted on your body and it's a nice wide strap too and then you just kind of close it in the front with the buckle and you're good to go they also provide you with a top loop that way you can hand carry it when you're not wearing it but since we're on the back side of this thing let's just take a look at it and then we'll go into the Thule as well so on the back side of here you can see they haven't gone into extreme detail in uh, like wickening sweat and heat but i will give you a first hand account once you put this thing on your body you actually do kind of forget you have it on it's a very comfortable belt i didn't get hot and super sweaty well i was sweaty but this i don't think this created any heat it's well padded and it has a lot of breathing in there even though it's not like some super elaborate channel or sweat channeling kind of backing design on here so what we have with the Thule is an extra thick padding okay you got these sides which you know they're kind of uh, transparent and very very breathable I can definitely appreciate that but under this mesh it's it's kind of ribbed you hear that? It's ribbed and it has ventilated holes. So they definitely took special attention into ventilating your back. Uh, this might even be overkill because like I said, with the, uh, with the camel back, I actually forget this thing is on my body. It's very comfortable to wear. It is so hot out here. I'll tell you what, I am not an expert in this kind of stuff, but what I do know is I feel like I chose the right pack for me, my personal use. You might like the Thule more. I happen to like the Camelback more, but either way, you can't make a wrong decision. 
it's just a matter of getting out of this heat. I gotta find my way back home, man. But just to let you know, the camel back is all right with me. I gotta get out of here and find my way home. But until I see y'all again, make sure y'all keep being good to each other and I'll see you when I see you. Oh, so you one of them cats that like to just run up in a place, take what you want, then leave, huh? Man, you better hit that subscribe and notification button. That way you know when I'm over here opening up new stuff. And while you're down there, you may want to consider tapping that uh, join button and becoming a member because membership has its perks. See, that wasn't so bad. All right, man, I appreciate you. And I'll see you at the next one. Is this not why you are here?